Our third speaker is going to give us some hope, I hope. Kevin Jones, who has over 20 years experience in the electric power industry. He is currently the director of power market policy for one of the nation's largest municipal utilities, managing the utility's wholesale market operations with the grid operators. He's previously served as the director of energy policy for the city of New York and has taught managing energy issues at RPI's Lowry School of Management and Technology. He's also served four terms as an alderman in the city of Rutland. Kevin. About four or five slides and uh, um, hopefully we can um, get on to some questions um, quickly. First, I'd like to just start out by saying um, that I'm, I'm not someone that opposes wind power. Um, I think it's an important part of um, our ability to meet our energy needs and um, do it in a way that um, respects our environmental concerns. But um, clearly, as in um, production of any, any other type of energy, you know, the concerns we've had addressed tonight obviously are, have to be at the forefront um, for integrating um, you know, wind as part of the, the picture. I think there's some unique issues for Vermont, some that obviously are very similar to, to what's happening in, in Canada and across the U.S. But um, in Vermont, um, you know, as, as we all know, um, especially from this project, our wind resource is very different than, than in other parts of the country. And um, the, the, the key thing is, I mean, in, in other parts of the, of, of the U.S. where um, wind power is being developed a lot, you know, it's, um, there's, there's a much, much different resource, um, unlike Vermont, where we can only put it essentially at the ridge tops, given the, the fact that the um, geography of area, the, the Adirondacks, what it does to the, the wind resource, you have to get up to, rent, you know, in a 2,000 foot area before you get enough wind speed to make it profitable for the companies that um, want to develop the project. Um, out in areas like um, Texas, for example, which is now leading um, you know, the, the country in wind power development, there's like 8,000 megawatts of, of wind installed there. Um, anyone that's been out in West Texas knows there's not a heck of a lot out in West Texas, and um, the wind turbines have been mostly embraced. I'm sure we have, we have some, some stories of, of, of issues up, um, there, but it's, it's a very different environment than Vermont. So that's, I think the first thing we, we need to feel comfortable about is that, that this isn't, you know, just a nimby thing. We have, we have some, some um, different issues because of the ridge tops, and that's, that's the only place it can be put. The other thing that's become um, increasingly problematic is just increasing turbine size. I mean, we've probably all heard about, um, you know, Vermont being the first state in that actually had a, a, a utility-scale wind farm project, a, a Reedsboro project. Um, but during, since that time, um, given the economy of scale of wind, um, the turbines have gotten much bigger from you know, half a megawatt up to, to um, multi-megawatt wind turbines and have, have gotten much, much larger and, and some of the, the environmental issues and health issues are, are different. Um, the good news for Vermont is that because of our small size, because of um, the, um, our limited population and limited um, electrical load here, the fact that we're actually relatively efficient people, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of what we do, um, in terms of meeting our energy needs, and, and doing so in a manner that um, can be, you know, um, easier on the environment. So um, that, that's going to be kind of the topic of, of, of my talk, and I want to spend a few, a few minutes on, because I'm often asked by people whether, um, you know, hear about this project, about the project that Noble had, um, you know, before they um, um, pulled the plug on the one that was going to be in the, in the Grand Panab um, Ridge Line. Um, what, for, from a lot of people that are concerned, I mean, the question is, you know, well, if we don't, you know, build wind on the ridge tops, if we don't, you know, um, embrace, um, you know, what our governor has labeled as industrial wind, then, then how do we meet our energy needs in a manner that respects, you know, climate change and other things like that? So I, I'd just like to talk about that for a couple minutes. First, I just want to point out one thing that this debate's not about. I have a lot of friends that say, well, you know, I don't like Vermont Yankee. I want to shut down Vermont Yankee. How can, I, how can we um, deal with an issue like that if we're not willing to, to accept other alternatives? Well, you know, whether you, um, you know, whatever side you are on that issue, we don't need to get into that tonight. 
the clear thing is there, these two issues are not connected. Um, if you look at the long, you know, um, Vermont Electric um, Power Company, Volco, is required to do um, a long-term electric plan. And if you, you look at that close enough, you can see very closely, very clearly in that plan that um, Vermont, that Vermont Yankee could be shut down um, tomorrow or in 2012 when they're, um, 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 it could, could be shut down tomorrow and, and not have any impact on um, Vermont's transmission system. So we could shut it down, um, there would be no reliability impact, there would be no upgrades that would be needed to be done on the system. And if you look at the um, long-term resource plan done by um, ISO New England, which is the grid, oper grid operator for um, the New England states, um, they also clearly point out that there um, are no reliability issues um, through 2018, and we actually in 2018 have 600 megawatts of excess energy, even if we don't build any. So lots, obviously there's lots of wind projects and other things out there being proposed, but um, um, the Mont Yankee could be, could be closed tomorrow without any, you know, or at the end of this license without any reliability impact, and um, we are in an excess um, supply situation. So I, I, don't think, I don't think that's really part of the debate here. Um, the next issue that um, obviously comes to the forefront is the whole issue of climate change. And one of the things we need, I think we also need to understand is that in Vermont and throughout the Northeast, we have something called the Regional Greenhouse Gas, gas Initiative. You may have you know, read about it, um, know a little bit about it, but um, Vermont and Northeastern states have embraced um, a, a, a form of um, climate change regulation that essentially caps um, um, emissions um, for climate change, for, for CO2 on an annual basis. And whether we build um, this wind project or 100 of them in Vermont, that will not change um, the greenhouse gas emissions through the Northeast because, because they are capped no matter what. Whether Vermont Yankees an operation or we you know, build a new um, gas plant in southern New England um, to, to serve our needs, um, that won't change because we have um, a cap on greenhouse gases. Now, um, Congress, with the you know, um, change administration, is likely to put something in place, you know, cap and trade um, um, regulations, um, you know, for the for the whole U.S. It's the same thing. I mean, it, it's it's not based on emissions from an individual plant. You can um, whether you build a lot of wind turbines or not. You have to, you know, um, the power generators cannot exceed cannot exceed that cap. And um, so, climate change, you know, really is not you know part of the debate in terms of a local wind project because. The, the emissions are capped on a, on a regional basis. The other issue that we um, want to talk about is, um, or I want to address a little bit, is what are called renewable portfolio standards, or renewable electric standards, um, being debated. Um, I mean, every New England state except Vermont has um, what they call um, an RPS standard, where um, based on certain time frames, a certain percentage of energy has to come from renewable resources. Um, Vermont has not implemented that. We've done some, some um, similar things where, where we've required our utilities to, to uh, meet their low growth by um, renewable energy. Um, but the other New England states have put in this um, renewable portfolio standard, and it's something that's being debated at the federal level now, and is, you know, legislation has passed um, committees of both the House and the Senate that. Um, are looking at putting in um, a federal, um, what they call RES, Renewable Electricity Standard, that would, um, from the Senate version, would require um, um, meeting 15% of our energy needs by renewable energy by 2020. And, and um, in the House version of the bill, they would require us to meet 20% um, of our energy needs by 2021. Um, both of these allow energy efficiency to meet a quarter of the requirement. And I think it's a little bit, it's, it's important to talk a little bit about um, these kinds of renewable energy programs too because, um, you know, projects like this wind project, um, um, it, it's important to understand how the systems um, work in order to understand how individual projects will, will impact that. 